Hey, this is Dr. Barry. For the next few minutes, let's talk about a subject that's probably going to irritate many doctors and physical therapists, but I think it's something that's very important that you understand, and hopefully that the doctors and physical therapists will come to understand, uh, that we've been misled, and that is the subject of what should you do in the face of an acute injury to a joint or to a soft tissue, should you follow the uh, apparently set in stone advice of rest, ice, compression, and elevation, or should you do something else to improve the odds of you healing completely and also as quickly as possible? Now, what I want you to do with this video, if you know a doctor or a physical therapist, I want you to share this video with them. You're welcome to share it on your Facebook or your, your LinkedIn or your Twitter or wherever, but I really want you, if you're going to share it, share it with a doctor or physical therapist because I want them to know this information. I, as a doctor in the early years of my practice, I did not know this. I believed the RICE acronym. I believed it faithfully and blindly as a good doctor should. But as years have gone by and I've actually started to dig deeply into the research, I've discovered that this not only is not the best way to treat an acute injury, it's probably one of the very worst ways uh, to treat an injury. Now, at the very end of this video, I'm going to tell you what you should actually do to help an acute injury heal as quickly and completely as possible, because that's the ultimate goal of this, right? And so let's talk about this superstition of rice, rest, ice, compression, and elevation. Where did it come from? Why have we dogmatically clung to this despite uh, a quite a bit of meaningful research showing that it's ridiculous to do this to an acute injury? So a doctor by the name of Gabe Merkin wrote a book back in 1978 about sports medicine. I'm sure it was a very good book. But in this book, he this is the first time that it's ever been put in black and white, rest, ice, compression, elevation, rice. And so it immediately became the gospel for all orthopedic surgeons, sports medicine specialists, family doctors, internists, pediatricians, that if a patient comes to you with an acute injury, to a joint or a soft tissue, that this is immediately what you should do. Now, we all want to, to be helpful, right? Whether you're a mom or whether you're a physical therapist or, or, or a doctor, you want to help people. That's good. And so, but, but it also makes you very susceptible to blindly believing a superstition like rest, ice, compression, and elevation. Uh, and so because every doctor wants to appear to be helpful, every physical therapist or trainer, we want to appear to be helpful. If, our, if, if you have an athlete who sprains an ankle or you overwork a tendon at work, you, you, whoever's taking care of you wants to appear to be very knowledgeable and helpful. And indeed, so do doctors and therapists. They want to appear to know what they're doing. And so this mnemonic immediately made it possible for them to do the standard of care which actually, when you look into it, is based on nothing. So let's talk about healing. And since human beings are mammals, let's talk about the healing of all mammals. Mammals have been on this planet for millions and millions of years. All mammals use the same process of healing in the face of an acute injury. And so whether it's you and you sprained your ankle on the basketball court or whether it's your, uh, your child and they fall and bump their head and get a, a little knot or whether it's a wild animal out in the forest and they twist their knee jumping off something or trying to catch something, we all heal exactly the same way. It's a three-step process. And the healing process in mammals goes like this. Inflammation, then uh, proliferation, and then maturation. And then every medical student is taught this in their first year of medical school. But then we, we get so busy with medical practice, we forget this. Now, let's go over those again. Inflammation, proliferation, and maturation. So what's the very first step of the healing process? Inflammation. Right. You heard me right. And you're probably thinking, wait a minute, I thought inflammation was bad. Chronic inflammation it can be quite bad, and that's something I'm going to talk about in other videos on this channel, but, but we're talking about today acute inflammation. You have hurt yourself. You strained something. You sprained something. You bumped something, and now you have the five classic symptoms of acute inflammation. They are pain, redness, swelling, heat, 
and uh, immobility, right? And so say, let's just use an ankle sprain as an injury, as an example. So you sprain your ankle, it immediately starts to swell and get red. It hurts, of course. It, and when you touch it, it feels very hot. And you don't really want to use that ankle because it hurts when you, when you forcefully try to use it at full strength. So those are the five things that your body does immediately. Now, your body doesn't do these, these five things of inflammation because it's stupid. It doesn't do it because it's just a dumb animal and doesn't know any better, right? Your body does this because of millions and millions of years of the evolutionary process deciding this is the best way to heal an acute injury as quickly and as completely as possible. Right. And so many doctors and therapists and trainers somehow think that the human body is stupid, that, it, that we have to stop this inflammatory process as quickly as we possibly can. Right. And we do that with actually five steps for most uh, primary care and other health care providers. We want you to rest that area and just to completely immobilize it. Don't move it at all. We want you to put ice on it immediately. And we, we go through all kinds of superstitions like leave the ice on for 20 minutes and then alternate with heat back and forth or, or do ice for longer. Uh, we worry about the temperature of the ice, all these superstitions that are just meaningless. We want you to compress it, wrap it up really tightly right? And we want you to elevate it. But many, many doctors want you to take an anti-inflammatory for this, right? And so whether it's a steroidal anti-inflammatory or a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory like ibuprofen or naproxen or leave, they want you to take something immediately to halt the inflammatory process. But didn't we just say earlier that inflammation is the first step in the healing process? Yes, we did. And so obviously you can quickly see when you think about the ancestral, the paleoanthropological evidence and, and just where we've come from as a species. And when you think about the common sense of this question, you're just like, well, duh, you should never try to slow down the inflammatory process. That's dumb. Your bodies did that on purpose. That's the first step of the healing process. Yet even me as a doctor in my early career, I would try to stop the inflammation as quickly as I possibly could, thinking in my heart of hearts that I was doing you a great service. And actually what I was doing was slowing down your healing process. The area needs to swell immediately so that all of the lymphocytes and the macrophages can get in there as quickly as possible to begin breaking down the, the, the torn and the damaged tissue so that it can have room to heal. It has to heat up, but that's from the blood supply coming in, from all the blood vessels, the arterioles vasodilating, right? If you need to drain that area, the lymph vessels are going to be more than uh, capable of draining the area. If, if there becomes too much swelling, your lymph vessels will take care of that. There's a system for that. Your body got this, right? It doesn't need your help. The pain gives you feedback don't use this joint or this area of the body at full strength right now. It's injured. And so just imagine a, a uh, animal out in the wild. If they hurt a foot or a leg, they'll limp, right? They'll use that, that area of the body just as much as they possibly can. But if it hurts too much, they won't do it right? Never does an animal go and lay in the cave for six weeks and put ice on the joint and rest it and wrap it up with some leaves and, and take an anti-inflammatory. Animals are smarter than that. They don't do that. And that's why they heal so quickly and so completely is because if they don't heal completely and quickly, they'll die. But human beings, we have the kind of the liberty and the luxury of living in modern society. And so uh, it's my theory that many of the chronic injuries that come from an acute injury are caused because we interfere with the first step in the healing process, the inflammation. And so let me tell you, in my opinion, and I, I'm going to link some research down below so you can make your own opinion of, but this is what you should do if you sprain a joint or you injure, a, injure your soft tissue. Absolutely do not put ice on the area or any kind of cold whatsoever. That's going to slow down the inflammatory process, which is part of the healing process. You will slow down your healing if you do that. It's not ancestrally appropriate. It makes no common sense. And there is no research to, to back up putting 
ice on the area. It's, it's dumb. Uh, and I've got links down below so you can look this up for yourself. And, and so anytime a doctor comes at you and says, oh, I know that the, you know, the human body's done this for millions of years, but we now know better. We're going to do it a different way. You should immediately have a red flag go up and know that something's not right about that. You should absolutely not numb this area with pills or with ice. You want that pain. And I know you hate pain. We all do. But you need that pain so that you'll know how much to use this joint or this foot or this whatever. The pain is feedback. So you can stay mobile but not overuse the joint, right? And so if you sprain an ankle, you want to keep walking on that. You definitely don't want to keep playing basketball or soccer or whatever at full speed. But you want to keep using that area. And that's the next step is don't rest it. You absolutely don't want to be going at 100% with this joint or with this soft tissue, but you want to keep using it as much as your pain will allow. There's actual research that shows that the earlier you return to mobility, the quicker this area heals. You absolutely don't want to compress this area. Again, you're keeping the fluids out. If you compress this with an ACE wrap or something else, that's you're slowing down the healing process. Once again, the first step in healing is inflammation. And you're slowing that down if you wrap this area very tightly. So uh, in my opinion, you shouldn't wrap it at all. Now, the manufacturers of ACE bandages won't be happy about that. But I think when you've healed and, and healed quickly from an injury, you'll never, ever do these things again. Because you'll say, gosh, when I just let my body take care of it, I actually healed days sooner than when I used to try to do the old rice method. The next thing is absolutely do not take an anti-inflammatory anti-inflammatory. First step of the healing process, inflammation. So when you take a steroid or when you take ibuprofen, Aleve, naproxen, any of those things, whether they're steroid or non-steroidal, you are blocking chemically the first steps of the healing cascade. Does that sound smart? That's not smart. Now, it is going to give you some pain relief, but remember I just said, don't numb this area. You want to be able to feel that pain which is only going to last for a few days, I promise. But if you take an anti-inflammatory, you completely screw up the first step of the healing process. And I'm, I am confident that you also increase your risk of having an acute injury turn into a chronic injury that just won't heal. And you wind up having months and months of problems with this joint or soft tissue instead of just a few days of problems. Whether you want to ele elevate the area or not, uh, there's no research either way that shows that elevation is good or bad. That's just, I think he just needed the E to make rice, you know, a nice tidy little saying so people would remember it. But elevation doesn't really serve any purpose whatsoever. Uh, if, I mean, if the whole point behind the elevation is to slow down the swelling. But remember, swelling is part of inflammation, which is the first step of the healing process. And so I would absolutely let, tell you counsel you to let your body take care of this. If anything, maybe add some extra heat in the form of a mild heating pad in order to increase the blood flow, increase the circulation to that area so that your body can heal this as quickly and as completely as possible. Now, like I said earlier, I put research, research links down below so you can do your own research. Uh, if any of you watching this now are doctors or, or therapists or trainers who someone shared this video with you and you're not happy with me right now, I would love it <clears throat> if you would post a link to any research that you can find showing that icing actually does help the healing process, showing that anti-inflammatories actually do help the healing process. Put those links down below and prove me wrong. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please consider clicking the subscribe button right down there somewhere. There's a little bell right beside it. If you click it, you'll get notifications the next time I have a bright idea. This is Dr. Barry. I'll see you next time.